Schematic Diagrams Part 3, Schematic Symbols. In our earlier videos, we talked about how the schematic diagrams are going to differ from manufacturer to manufacturer. The same holds true with the, their use of schematic symbols. Uh, different manufacturers are going to have different ways of depicting their different components within their systems on their schematic diagrams. So what we're going to look at today is just a representation of um, some common schematic symbols. It is not an all-inclusive list of, of different schematic symbols. Now there are, there are symbols for the power passing devices, which are, if you remember are switches and wires, the power consuming devices, which are the loads, motors, coils, and resistive heaters. There's also schematic symbols for circuit boards, but they usually just have the boards and the terminals are labeled with the input and output, but not the inner workings of the boards themselves. We'll take a look at that in another video. So I googled up schematic symbols. This is a really nice PDF that I found that has some very uh, good HVAC symbols. And if you Google uh, HVAC schematic symbols, you probably will find this as well. But I also recommend that you look for uh, Lennox Carrier, Bryant Train Manufacturers, PDFs for their installation guides and service manuals, and there will be uh, schematic diagrams in there and then you'll be able to get familiar with the different manufacturers and the symbols that they use in their schematics. We'll take a look at a Lennox um, schematic when we break down a contactor a little bit later. Okay so the first thing we're going to look at is loads. We have we have here a blower motor, compressor, condenser fan motor, a resistive heater, and a coil. So the first thing we're going to look at is motors. If you take a look above above here, one way, and I see this more often on the newer systems, that the motors are schematic symbol is just represented by a circle with some kind of designator in the center of it, like these have, to designate the compressor, the um, evaporator fan motor, and condenser fan motor. This is pretty common among manufacturers, however, the um, designators that they have in the center of these um, these circles that represent the motors may be different. So let's take a look at this. Here we have a compressor motor represented by one schematic symbol. This schematic symbol represents the same compressor. So don't get thrown off when you uh, go to one piece of equipment, it's, it is labeled nicely and it's a circle, then you go to the next one, this is the exact same component with a different schematic diagram. Here they, they show the windings of the motor rather than just the motor itself. Now this little symbol right here, not all of the schematics show this, but on compressors they do have it. This is the internal overload and it is a bimetal device when this comp if this compressor overheats, this bimetal strip is going to open up and break the circuit to the compressor and shut it off. So when you see this, this symbol right here, again, this is pretty, this is fairly common. This is an internal overload for a motor. When it heats up, it is going to pop open. When it cools down, it's going to close that circuit back up. Solenoid valves. This is a a coil activated device and many times with coil activated devices you you will see this schematic symbol right here this little zigzag and that represents the a coil that activates some type of a device and now the solenoid is a electrically operated valve so we'll we, and you'll see a lot of these on ice machines and um, other more complex HVAC equipment. But what it is, it's a valve that opens and closes when an elect electrical current is applied to this, this coil inside the solenoid valve. And what happens when you apply an electrical current to that solenoid valve, it creates a magnetic field and pulls a plunger up and it allows whatever is 
in the system to pass through that valve when that uh, current is removed the valve is spring loaded and springs back down and doesn't allow it to pass so when you see this symbol no matter what um, it represents it is a coil operated device which usually opens or closes a switch or a valve or some other um, type of device mechanically it, it opens and closes it electric heaters um, this is uh, again these are fairly common you'll see these throughout um, the industry any type of heater that you have the the coils of the heater are represented by these zigzag lines here and then as you can see that a regular heater a crankcase heater and a supplementary heater all have the same schematic symbol they're just going to be labeled differently but you know this is a resistive heater so when there's current flowing through here they heat up uh, and and glow like your electric um, your electric oven elements do contactors and relays we're going to talk about these briefly at the end here at the end of this video and get into them a little bit more in depth at the beginning beginning of the next these are also um, coil operated devices uh, they're a mechanical switch that are operated um, the same way and activated the same way as the solenoids valves are except rather than passing a fluid or refrigerant they will pass electric current and open and close a switch itself now again the older schematics the contactor coil which we saw with the solenoid is it is a symbol similar to this they show the coil itself in the older schematic diagrams the newer schematic diagrams you will also see this as the coil as well as this circle right here now they may have a designator inside here um, for example C1 for contactor 1 and down in the legend they'll exp um, you'll be able to find out what exactly that component is we'll take a look at legends on, on another video as well so again contactor coils you're gonna see this zigzag line here like we saw with the solenoid the these are this is a newer schematic symbol that you'll see the old school schematics will be have this uh, the coil represented as a coil itself in the um, diagram and then in the newer ones they'll have a circle like this now the one thing about contactors and relays is they have contacts that are called normally open and normally closed so this represents a normally open contact so if there's an electrical current flowing here it cannot pass through that normally open contact this is a normally closed contact and if there is an electrical current flowing through here it will pass through the normally closed contact so when you take a look at a contactor in this instance the normally open contact is open when there's no power applied the normally closed contact is closed when there's no power applied so let's take a look at this here is a contactor that has three different terminals terminals one and two or what are they nor normally open or normally closed these are normally open contacts here then we have no we have terminal number three which is normally closed contact so we'll look at this again we have electric current coming through this up to this terminal of the contactor it's in the normally open position it does not pass that current same with contact number two and then number three we pass current all the way through now with a, a contactor or relay if we apply voltage and allow current to flow through this coil remember that creates a magnetic field and it 
it activates the contactor or relay. So let's take a look at terminal one. Now we have power applied here. The normally open contact now closes. And the norm and the same with terminal number two. And then the normally closed contact terminal number three opens. So that's how a uh, contactor is represented in a schematic diagram. In a schematic diagram, a contactor or relay is always depicted in the de-energized state, meaning there's no voltage applied to the coil itself. And these are the positions that the contact should be in if it's normal, if, if it is not damaged and it's working properly. So just remember when you look at a schematic diagram the contactors are shown in the de-energized position. Now that concludes part three of schematic diagrams and schematic symbols. We'll continue on in part four. We're going to get a little bit more in depth with a um, contactor and relays just so you can get a better idea of how to uh, understand them in a schematic diagram. They're probably one of the most confusing components in a schematic diagram so we're going to go into those in depth. We'll also take a look at a real uh, Lennox schematic diagram that ha happens to have a circuit board on it so you can take a look at the different input and output terminals of that circuit board. Alright, so if you have any questions please email me at hvactrainingsolutions at gmail.com I'll be more than happy to help you with anything that you need.